Back in 2014, <laughs> yeah, back then, the top 10 three-point shooting NBA teams were making a three-point shot attempt on three out of every 10 possessions. With teams averaging about 100 possessions, they shot a combined 63 threes per game. Okay, nothing out of the ordinary here, except when you put it into perspective. In just the last 7 years, the top 10 teams in the league increased 3-point attempts to now shooting an additional 25 3-point attempts per game combined. If this doesn't sound crazy enough, take a look back just 10 years prior to 2004. LeBron's first year in the league, the top 10 3-point shooting teams shot a combined total of 36 threes per game. Back back then, if you watched a game between today's leaders in 3-point attempts, the Utah Jazz and the LeBron led Cavaliers, you wouldn't even get to 20 total threes as both teams shot less than 20 threes combined per game. Needless to say, the 3-pointer is not going anywhere. 50 years from now, this era will be remembered and a few players will have their names etched into eternity as pillars of the revolution of the game. The incredible ability of these marksmen, snipers under pressure, sets them apart from their peers. Back in the days of your grandfather, the game was dominated by centers in the low post. In the days of your father, the mid-range was king. Today's game is an outside shooter's game, and the ones at the top of the podium have revolutionized their franchises. But one among them has taken it to a step well beyond that of anything we've ever seen. With shooting so lethal, the rest of the league has been in systemic shock trying to figure out just how to stop him. You might think you already know the answer to this question, do you? I've statistically analyzed the last two years of available data on the three-point shooting metrics of the best shooters in today's NBA and arrived with the five most problematic shooters from beyond the arc in order starting with the fifth best shooter and ending with the most dangerous prolific shooter in modern basketball. I've taken into account the number of attempts for reliability of a comprehensive data set, shot difficulty based on defender proximity, angle of shot release, shot accuracy, clutch threes, deep range, floor position, gravity, and outright Demolition of these phony niggas. I've found the motherfucking greatest. <laughs> Paul George, aka PG13, has cracked my top five list of the most dangerous shooters on the planet. It is no secret that Paul George is one of the best players in today's basketball. After all, he just inked a long-term deal with the Clippers worth $190 million over the next four years. At somewhere between 6'8 and 6'9, PG-13 has the size of a power forward or a center, the handling and vision of a point guard, the scoring ability of a shooting guard, and of course, he can play small forward. This combination makes Paul George a very difficult player to guard. While he has a range of moves, his ability to shoot from distance, off the catch or off the dribble is what gets him on this list. Though he isn't really known as a deep range shooter compared to the likes of Steph, Dame and Trey Young, Ije Trece doesn't break a sweat when it comes to scoping out an opponent's basket from distance. In this one instance, we see a 270 pound, 7 foot 2 monstrosity in the paint, affectionately known as All-Star Roy Hibbert, who quite possibly could kiss the rim on his tiptoes, horribly miss after being bullied by a 4 inches smaller and second year player in Andre Drummond. So he grabs the rebound and with 3 seconds on the clock, tosses it to half court for a bailout. Paul George lasers it in from the logo to beat an unexpiring clock? Apparently the timekeeper wasn't a bathroom break. The real playoff P. Number 5. Paul George The next player on this list can go absolute bonkers from deep. One of the more athletic point guards that can get to a spot and seem impossible to guard at times, Damian Lillard, our fourth best shooter, has done it against the best this league has to offer. While Lillard is a superstar in his own right, he is still yet to make it to a finals game. During his attempts, however, Lillard has hit some of the most breathtaking deep threes that are simply stupefying. Known for his clutch threes from anywhere 35 foot and back, Dame Time isn't just a gimmick. 
Ask Paul George, our fifth best shooter, as well as one of the league's best defenders, why he was unable to stop a 6-3 Dame Lillard from knocking down this impossible shot, sending home the Oklahoma City Thunder and smashing that team into the remnants of underperforming veterans and almost good enough young players that currently remain on the corpse of what used to be a playoff contender in the Western Conference. No offense OKC, your time will come. Lillard is more than talented enough to lead a team to an NBA Finals. His problem is that the Trailblazers haven't surrounded him with the right mix of talent to complement his insane abilities. That said, winning a title is not exactly easy, especially when the one thing standing in your way is further up this list. Or is it two things? Now, I did say this video is based on the top 5 shooters in basketball based on a number of ranked factors. Here is where you have to let your bias slide. The third best shooter in basketball today is Duncan Robinson. An undrafted player that played Division III basketball is one of the top three shooters in modern basketball. Like I said, people lie, but numbers don't. And with an incredible separation, Duncan Robinson has earned this spot. Robinson was the ace of Miami sleeve during their 2020 playoff run. His ability to get red hot from deep, and let's face it, that's the majority of his game, helped propel the Heat not just to the Eastern Conference Finals, but all the way to the NBA Finals. This is how important it is to have players that can space the floor, giving teammates such as Bam and Jimmy the outside threat they need to operate at their best. This does not in any way take away from what Jimmy or Bam contributed to the team, but these shots. Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson. Robinson shoves the semifinal as a three drops. Show how vital it was that Duncan is able to knock down his opportunities. At this level of shooting, you do begin to have a bit of gravity to your game. Duncan's first year was phenomenal, and you saw the results. His second year, his shooting came back down to earth, and the Heat were dismissed in the first round. Needless to say, next year is a very important one for Duncan. Shooting in the 99th percentile just won't cut it for the volume necessary for the Heat to continue to rely on his shooting. With just two slots left for the best shooter in modern basketball, it was a bit difficult because I wanted to make sure that guys weren't overlooked based on underlying conditions that might prevent them from playing in the short term, but also take into account whether or not we expect them to continue performing at that level. It comes as no surprise then that the second best shooter in modern basketball is Klay Thompson. For anyone who's ever watched Klay in any one of his scorching hot performances, there are many to choose from. When hot, he is easily the most dominating shooter on the planet. Imagine taking over 90% of your team's shots in a single quarter and hitting every single one. How about owning the league record for the most number of threes in a single game? Check out the link in the top right of your screen if you are interested in seeing the shooting masterpiece that is Klay Thompson. Not only is he accurate, but his form is flawless. If you would like a player from which to emulate the ideal shot, your idol should be Clay. There's a reason why LeBron James, for the better part of the last decade, has been not so subtly recruiting the Warriors' lights out shooter. Despite being the second best player on the greatest franchise in modern basketball, Clay is fully capable of having a very competitive team with him as the first option. And for the most prolific and dangerous shooter currently in modern basketball, Ain't no way around it no more. I am the greatest. Lot of niggas set on the throne. I am the latest. I Look, there are many great shooters in the sport today, and any one of these guys would be impossibly good. What I mean is, without even taking his prior accomplishments into account, just his last two full years in the game, Steph Curry is without a doubt still the absolute dominant force outside the perimeter by a large margin. There is a reason that Steph is guarded by four players on any given night. Let me make this clear. Imagine how difficult of a task it is for any normal person to be guarded by a single NBA caliber player. Forget it, you are not getting a bucket. Now let's put two NBA caliber players on you. At that point, you hug the ball and call timeout. For a team to put four of their guys on a single player is a level we have not seen otherwise. Despite how incredulous this sounds, I can't fault the Phoenix Suns, who at the time had the league's second best record, for doing everything they can to stop the most lethal shooter in the league. Just a couple of months ago in April, Steph broke two different records set by Kobe for a total of four records broken in a single month. 
Those records include most 30 point games in a row by a player 33 or older, most 30 point games in a single month by a player 33 or older, most threes by any player ever in a calendar month with 96 total, the most 40 point games in a single month by a player 33 or older with 5, not to mention he also won yet another scoring title averaging 32 points per game for the season. A lot of players have been trying to emulate his game and will continue to do so, but so far none have been successful. No other player plays with Steph's level of gravity and no other shooter has been this successful with this level of defensive pressure. Stephen Curry has been the most incredible player to watch in the NBA and most people won't realize till it's too late the level of greatness that they are witnessing. Me, personally, I'm happy to be watching basketball, continuing to see his story unfold and appreciate his greatness while he's still out there on the floor. Stephen Curry He's just unfair. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time. Bruce like Wayne, meets Bruce like Lee, meets O2 Lil Wayne, and a new white tee meets Steph Curry. Ain't no nigga that can shoot like me. I block so hard, sweetie, get served. Call me Lonzo Ball, bitches get swerved. Usually, I don't get down with these girls, but tonight it's on my mind. So I might eat these birds.